Welcome to the Teaching Bites Podcast. Here are your hosts, Fred and Sharon Jaravada. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Teaching Bites Show, where we connect you with people and ideas to take your teaching to the next level. I'm your host, Sharon. And I'm Fred. And today we're going to talk about why you should give presentations or talks or work in workshops. And since I have never done one, because I haven't done one, and I'd like to one day, but Fred has, how he wants him to talk about how you guys can give a talk, what's involved in it, you know, and why you should do it. Why you should do it. All right. So yes. So a little background: the past two years, maybe three, I forget, two years maybe. um, I think getting myself out there and giving talks, right? And mainly they've been talking about how to, uh, about the transformation of the computer lab and in classrooms into a flexible makerspace. A makerspace, you you heard all all over right now with the maker fairs, maker movement, you'll see um, all that stuff. But um, ours is not a traditional maker space. It is a maker space, however, it's definitely a flexible maker space where the flexible part is important. Mm-hmm. We talk about how things can move around, things are modular, things can be are on wheels, things can be configured any way the student wants or the teacher wants or the faculty wants. Doesn't matter. Things are writable, things are they can be what you want to be. You can close yourself off in a little, a little cubicle if you wanted to, or not. You can do a whole. You can do a class meeting. You can do two class meetings. You can do a faculty meeting. You can do individual work also. And that, so that's yeah. what that's what flexible classroom, at least the way we're doing it, means. And I've seen you have um, like two cl- or three classes going at one time, where they right. section off parts of the space. Mm-hmm. And it's also mm-hmm. it's been uh, this this philosophy has also been. Going, spreading out all of campus into the hallways, into these learning commons. The library has changed into learning commons and so on. So I've been giving talks. You know, I did one, a big one in Atlanta um, <clears throat> with my new friend, Lee Northrup of the Canon School in North Carolina. What's up, Lee? And my other buddy I met at, at, Atlant- at Atlas Conference, Nicole. Uh, Nicole. <laughs> Sorry, it's Nicholas. Nicholas, Nicholas Cole Farrell. And he's down here in San Francisco, actually, about maybe five block, five miles away from where I live, actually. And uh, we connected there for the first time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So why should, why do I encourage teachers to give talks at conferences, workshops, do workshops around the, uh, workshops? I think I know. Or what? Well, you know, all teachers, okay, so all teachers are, you know, expected to teach a curriculum to their kids, you know, throughout the year, but you have to go beyond that and go teach about what you're passionate or good at to other teachers, to be a teacher leader. Right. That's how they learn. hmm You know? So it was a big thing. When I first started this a couple of years ago, you know, I, I got nervous. I'm like, who am I? to present this stuff. Imposter syndrome. That is the imposter <laughs> syndrome. And imposter syndrome mm-hmm. means that you start questioning yourself of, who am I to do this? I'm not, I'm not authority. good enough for this. I don't yeah. have a book. I'm not an author. I'm not a professor. Mm-hmm. I don't do this. You know, I don't have mm-hmm. research on this. But that that is a mindset in itself, right? Yeah. You think yeah. you, can, you shouldn't mm-hmm. do it. But in all reality, you should be doing it. As teachers, you are experts at what you do already, whether it's uh, reading, uh, reading uh, recovery to uh, math, PE, PE, whatever. Mm-hmm. You guys, you teachers, are experts at what you do. I don't want to do those things. I, I've read about it. I've done a little bit of it, but I'm not an expert in those things. But you are there. You are experts at that, and that's where. What the reason? That's the reason why you should share your talents and your passions with other teachers, so they can get better at what they're doing. I mean, okay, so let me take this now. You you are talking about maker spaces, right? Mm-hmm. In the past two years, you said, and there's lots of people talking about maker spaces, mm-hmm. right? So I would assume I would think that you're. It's just you're ex- presenting 
in the way you think, right? In your context, and my own our own case studies, our own anecdotal stories, right? In our own way, our own experience. You're not trying to say you're better than everybody else. This is just what you experience. Nothing's absolute, right? And you're right. sharing with other people because they could get ideas, right? That, that's you know. the whole point. Mm-hmm. When Mike, you want to give this talk, and I'm giving a talk in LA next week. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's why we're taking a family yeah, vacation down home. there. Well, I'm from here. Yeah, my, my home. Yeah. So I'm going down to mm-hmm. LA. I was. Uh, uh, I'm going to be talking about this again in Los Angeles, the Windward School, Windward School, in LA. Um, so that's exciting. I'm going to share our experiences at the uh, School Seeker Heart Convent and Stewart Hall here in San Francisco, and take it from there. Um, I've also given talks at not just Atlanta, but also here in San Francisco um, about innovation how to innovate your curriculum how the or excuse me how, six ways to spark innovation mm-hmm. in your classroom i talk about that at the brand school um i met with nicholas at, at atlanta <laughs> and i'm going back and forth it's kind of crazy but um mm-hmm. he invited me since we connected there and we got close he invited me to speak at his school to his faculty um i also uh, spoke at the um san, san domenico school and here in um, San Anselmo in Northern California, Northern Bay Area. And we talked about our, again, my the makerspace with Kristen Chosty, my uh, my, uh, my colleague that we, do, that we run the Spark Studio with. Um, so we're sharing our stories. We're sharing our challenges. We're sharing our wins, our aha moments, our oh no mo- moments, and the... Um, the tada moments, and there are a lot mm-hmm. of those things, so that others mm-hmm. can see what they need to consider before they even make a maker space, or they're just about to make a maker space. Yeah. You need all the three mm-hmm. D printers. Be careful with that. And when mm-hmm. I say I love the three D printers, but at the same time, they're headaches. And mm-hmm. I tell, and I, and I tell the uh, the audience members why and what to watch out for. Well, I think because they probably see pictures like this is a shiny thing, yeah, and it's so cool, the, but in reality. It's like it's important to talk or, about it. It's like your you iceberg know. metaphor. Mm-hmm. Explain your. M- yeah, so this is my favorite thing I show kids. So you know the iceberg. There's a part of the ice that's shown above water, and of course, there's a part that's shown below the water. So when you're going through the process of creating something or writing something or whatever, you always there's always the editing, the failures, the oh, I'm going to give up, or the successes. That's the stuff that you don't see um, in the final product. So that's under the water. The final products are the ones that you see in the iceberg, the one that you see above water. And so it's important to, sh- to show kids and teachers that this is a whole process to making this where it is now. You can't just go here and then, ta-da, but go over what actually went through, what you, what you went through to get there, right? And that's the whole <clears throat> point of me... Mm-hmm us encouraging you to share your story, your wins, and your challenges, and your failures with other teachers to help them get better. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over a couple things that are important. Why, I mean, why mm-hmm. the good things, the benefits of talking. Okay, good. I was right? going to go there. The benefits about. real quick. Mm-hmm. So one is that you get to share your story with other teachers who are interested in this stuff. They want to get better at it. Right, so you're already helping people. That's hugely important, and yeah. um, you may not uh, have all the answers, but you have an answer, an option for those people. You can also big thing here is to connect with other people. You connect with not just the other speakers and thought leaders out there, but you get to connect with their everyday teachers as well. I was so lucky uh, when I went to Atlanta with Howard. Uh, my my administrator, we went there. I was uh, going to co-present with Lee Northrup, and I never met him, but we did it. Uh, we we met we met each other on Skype. We did that, and we hit it off. And hey, we had a beer. We enjoyed it. We also I had them in a, uh, a podcast episode. Podcast yeah. episode. <laughs> Same thing with Nicholas. You know, now I consider them consider them colleagues of mine. You know, and if not friends of mine. Um, well, and then Nicholas invited you to Brandeis to speak. So, like right. that connection. And a few weeks ago, you know, I fell. Mm-hmm. I was reaching for something 
stupidly <laughs> trying to reach something stupidly. <laughs> My part, I think a water bucket that was full, and I was trying to reach it, and I was standing on top of a uh, of a water uh, an igloo uh, a cooler, cooler, and you didn't listen to me, and I told you not to get on there. Use and a then step stool, you fell, and I get a deep cut that yeah, actually lacerated. Gash, it lacerated <laughs> my my right leg, um, about two inches, maybe three inches deep or long. I had to get stitches, but hey, Lee, he texted me asking if I was all right. That is That's cool. so nice. I know. You know, so. Um, connections and, and relationships, mm-hmm. right? You mm-hmm. form relationships. It's amazing, right? Uh, that is probably the most important benefit because you get to learn how to trust each other. I have a question. Have you since connected with him since you guys met each other? Have you guys reached out to each other about like, oh, I need an idea for this? Right. So there are, right. well, not for an mm-hmm. idea. Yet. Well, I, I know he talked about it in, this, in, the, in the podcast episode we did together. He talked about this, um, the Kerrig uh, Cups, okay, cups. Okay, cups, right? Yeah, So I might cool. do something with that because we do have a carry also and then those are ridiculous. Uh, so we may rift on uh, no, Lee's project with his kids. Um, but also, I'm going to connect with him hopefully next year at the South at um, Atlas at, uh, in Los Angeles, maybe next year also, mm-hmm. I mean, April. Ooh, I want to go. Probably we <laughs> are going to go. And then also for the <laughs> South by Southwest EDU, mm-hmm. um, I'm applying uh, to get um, to get a sh- uh, to share my experience with podcasting with kids, uh, with a student-based project. Um, that's our next episode, by the way. Right, let's we'll talk about that exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, how to uh, create a classroom podcast and why you should do it. Exactly. So keep uh, keep an eye out. So I mm-hmm. apply for that South by Southwest, and I invited him and Nicholas to do that. I think Nicholas is actually going to do the lock picking thing. Ooh, that's like the <laughs> so Maker Faire. Cool. They have that lock right. picking class. So he's doing amazing things. I connect with him. I see his uh, Instagram, and he does amazing things. But relationships and connecting with others, you know, and also other people, which is great. So connecting with other people is amazing. That rejuvenates myself, you know, and other p- teachers. So I have a question. You know, I've never given a talk before. So how would I get myself to do that? Where would I look? Where would I go? All right, so you got to make sure you, what you want to share. You got to figure out what you are pretty good at, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you want to present, not just attend. <clears throat> Attending's yeah. easy, right? You find a lot of, uh, you join a lot of email lists and you, you talk to your admin. And I'm sure your district shares a lot. Hopefully, your district shares a lot of professional development opportunities to attend. Now, when you check those uh, applications to attend, sometimes you'll see a box or a section Mm. they will ask are you interested in presenting oh Mm. so um, if not there's probably a separate link there you find it and um, find something that you think that other teachers will get value from and all you teachers you have something of value to share okay yes please don't think that don't have the imposter syndrome and think that who don't think that who do you think you are Mm. to share what you're doing okay that you need to get that mindset out of the way. Get it out of the way. You need to share what you're doing because you know what? Other teachers, up and coming teachers or burnt out teachers, they don't know what you know and they need to figure that out. You need they need your help. Always think that they need your help. And they do. They really do. Okay? So have that mindset. Get rid of that imposter syndrome and just help other people. Okay. And ultimately, like you said, you get connections and network of people. I think that's like the amazing thing that comes out of it because we're so siloed that I, you know, having another person that's not at your school or in a different state would seem like a refreshing thing, you know. So with that, also get your admin to support you. Say to your admin that you're interested in um, mm-hmm. presenting this. Um, maybe your admin, hopefully they should know some events, some conferences or workshops that they, they're aware of, that they can point you, direct you to, hey, you'd probably be good. You could probably be a good match to this, right? Yeah, Howard, thank you so much for encouraging Fred to do that. You know, you empowered him to, like, talk and all these We're gonna things. We're going to get Howard so. on the show. So yeah. I know you guys, <laughs> the, the listeners are like, who the heck is Howard? <laughs> or Levin. You'll find that in the, as the uh, weeks come, okay? Um, so find mm-hmm. out your passion. Share your experience, okay? Now... You can also co-present with a colleague of yours. 
Okay. You mm-hmm. can go with your grade level uh, <clears throat> co-teacher or grade level teacher, a colleague. You can present with another specialist okay, that you yeah. work with. Mm-hmm. So that is a very uh, good way, you know, if you're, you feel kind of nervous by yourself to do it. Have a, a colleague to join you. You and your colleague work together, and you work it. You you plan it. You talk your you, you plan your talk, and you, which section covers who, who covers which section, and so on. And do it that way. Probably have deeper bond by mm-hmm. doing that. Yeah, there are a lot of also a lot of places that uh, conferences mm-hmm. that also do. Would you be willing to connect with other people from across the country that you never met, other teachers? And I highly suggest yes, try it out, do it. Mm-hmm. Connect with other teachers that you never met and co-present with them. Obviously, you will need to, to do a lot of meetings, virtual or video meetings or phone call meetings to connect and make sure you are meshing well and you have your story meshes mm-hmm. together, mm-hmm. right? Um, also, um, you'll find out once you do this, once you commit something, you will, you, your practice, your teaching practice, practice you're going to get deeper and deeper into what you're doing yeah because it, it, when you can really explain it many times then you really know it really mm-hmm. well you know exactly. you teach it and then you know what the important things are what the essential things are so that you can yeah you're right deep in your practice with it and mm. then and then you will connect with mm. these thought leaders out there you know they'll notice your name they'll notice you you know these you know my goal is to get noticed by sir ken robinson you know, that's Ooh. one day, one yeah. day, one day. Hey, Hi, sir, Ken, Ken. Hey, sir. Uh, what's up? <laughs> Let's do a co-present. Let's present together. Come we, on, bro. I, I was like five feet from you at AT&T, AT&T Park in San Francisco. Like two years ago. We saw him <laughs> two years ago. At Ed Rev. Yeah. Right. And I spoke there. Yeah, you did. Twice. Mm-hmm. Two years in a row. Ed yeah. Rev is a uh, uh, conference happening here for design for sharing um as, uh, te- uh, assistive technologies to- tools for um, students with special with special needs. Exactly, they have a um, a floor where you can go look go research about camps for students with autism. Mm-hmm. To I mean, it's it's really cool. All right, so yeah. here's the other thing. Besides imposter syndrome, to, to get rid of that, here's another mic drop moment from me to you. Share your story. Be honest with your story. Share your challenges, your failures, and what you're going to do about it. Those are the things that people want to hear. They don't want to see the shiny things, you know, all Mm -hmm. that. Like Sharon was talking about the iceberg, top of the iceberg. They want to see the whole process, what the challenges, because they're going to go through that. And your job is being the mentor, giving them tips and ideas, how to get shortcuts through that. Or if there are mm-hmm. if there are not shortcuts, but at least have them be aware of the things that can pop up, right? Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. a mic drop moment. Bam. Bam. <laughs> so yeah. So I we encourage you, and you share. I'm looking at you. You should mm-hmm. also share your story with other teachers because yeah. it's hugely important, not just for yourself. But also for the teach, the new up and coming teachers or the burnt out veteran teachers, out and there. you don't feel so alone when you hear other people go through the same thing as you. And if you haven't noticed, you guys, we interview teachers so that you can feel that way and that you're validated and that you know you keep keep and keeping on. This is one of know? the one of the projects. This this podcast itself, the Teaching Bites podcast show. This is the uh, this is one way we're trying to reach out. Also, our ideas now, our. Are ID uh, are our ideas the correct ideas? I don't know. It depends on you. It may work for us. It may work for you. But at least we're sharing tips and ideas, right? Right. And this is just our world. We. This is just what we know. Right. You know. But nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing is a substitute for face to face. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So, again, people, you beautiful nerds out there. I'm stealing that line from Robin Morris, by the way. You beautiful nerds out there, go ahead and do present workshops out there, workshops and conferences. Maybe that could be one of your goals for the school year, you know, try to get yourself out there. 
Mm-hmm. So we have a lot, we have a lot of good things to say and to to teach each other. It's exhilarating. I swear to God, it is. Okay, folks. All right. Well, thank you for your time listening to our show. Please leave a really honest review. We appreciate it very much. And you can email me at Sharon at teachingbytes.com. And email me at Fred at teachingbytes.com. And find us at teachingbytes.com on Pinterest, Instagram, and all those social iTunes, media places. We're all on there. Yep. All right, folks. Peace. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Teaching Bites podcast at www.teachingbites.com.